absolutely. Libido is affected by your hormones. It's all made out of steroid hormones. I hear a lot of women having issues with uh, vaginal dryness, for instance. That's a, a symptom associated with menopause. It actually is related to cortisol. If you have high cortisol levels, all your mucus is going to go to your limbs to run from danger. So, so your nasal mucus, your eye mucus, your intestinal mucus, and your vaginal mucus is just going to go away from those tissues. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're in a high cortisol state, many people are at night because they have imbalanced cortisol, especially if they're eating carbohydrates. They will have vaginal dryness and they will associate it with menopause. And then they'll go on hormone replacement therapy, which all it does is raise their cortisol levels. Scientifically, it just raises their cortisol levels. So my current advice to, to women of menopausal age when they start to have symptoms is to, first of all, try a, a very high fat carnivore diet first for 90 days. Mm -hmm. If that fixes all your symptoms, great. If it doesn't, then continue to eat a, a, a diet rich in animal fat and animal protein, but consider bioidentical hormone optimization. And that's my current uh, recommendation to people. Susan, one of our tribe members says, is it correct, Dr. Bright, that you do not believe that menopausal women need bioidentical hormones? Or do you think there's a place for that in certain situations? I honestly don't. Because if you eat fat, you're making your own hormones at the rate that you need. Obviously, you have to have adequate iodine levels in order to have your thyroid be able to figure out how many hormones to make because T3 hormone actually regulates which hormones, which steroid molecules are synthesized. Now, bioidentical hormones are plant sterols. Our body's receptors recognize cholesterol. So those are the sterols that our receptors are really looking for. Yeah, they're actually made from a wild Mexican yam in most cases. And even though they are the bioidentical, same exact molecule as the molecules our body makes, they do come from plants. Now, another good question here from Meta. Uh, she's had her ovaries and uterus surgically removed. Now, the adrenal glands in women can make some of the sex hormones, but do they make enough? What about a woman like Meta? They actually make five to 90 percent. So we know this actually from Labrie's work in the 80s when they chemically castrated men who had prostate cancer. They looked at their testosterone after, after, testosterone levels afterwards and they saw, gosh, these guys still have testosterone. How is that possible? Mm -hmm. Same exact thing in women. So most of our hormones, most of our adrenal hormones are made all our lives, sorry, all our sex steroids are made in the adrenals all our lives. It is during pregnancy when an egg is fertilized that the ovaries really come into focus to build the placenta and do all of that work. But all of the rest of the time, it's the adrenal. So even with surgical menopause, you are still, if you eat fat and you have at reduce your stress, minimize your stress, you will be able to make those hormones that you need in your adrenals. Susan says, uh, I'm taking 2% Lugols to shrink benign nodules on my thyroid. I take 10 drops a day. Should I take more? Uh, well, that's uh, five drops of 5%. I mean, I would do the Hakala lab iodine test to see if you have fluoride and halides attached to your receptors. Yep. Maybe the iodine's not able to park in those iodine parking places. Yeah. And I, and I love that you brought up fluoride. I think this is about to become a very talked about topic. I don't know if you saw in the United States, there was a recent court case uh, that said uh, fluoridated, fluoridated water is is that it's a that's a problem we need to rethink that and relook at that i'm not sure if they uh put I, fluoride in the water in italy or not but here in america many communities you have no choice if you drink city water municipal water there's going to be fluoride in the water and that's a huge problem not only for children's iq but also for thyroid health walk us through how if you're if you're drinking fluorinated water if you're cooking with fluoridated water how does that affect thyroid health? Well, it interferes with the absorption of iodine. The thyroid cannot make thyroid hormone from fluoride. It can only make it from iodine. And that goes for bromide and chloride. Now, Ireland is another place where they have a huge issue with fluoride. In the UK, only certain areas, but Ireland is mandated to have fluoride in their water. And they have a huge issue with congenital hypothyroidism there, diabetes, I mean, fluorosis and you know, bone fractures, fluorosis causes all of this. And the problem with, with Ireland, though, is that not only the water, but they also drink a lot of tea. So you, it's a perfect storm 
fluorosis. Right. And so many people, if they drink a lot of tea, many tea leaves that naturally will concentrate fluoride in the tea leaves. Mm -hmm. And so if you're drinking a lot of tea and you're making that tea with fluoridated water, you're actually getting a mega dose of fluoride. And so I, I recommend, uh, I have a blanket recommendation. Nobody needs to drink fluoridated water. Not uh, any woman, not a pregnant woman, not a breastfeeding woman, not a menopausal woman. Everybody needs to drink fluoride-free water and start their children on fluoride-free water. The, the benefits to the human brain, to the human thyroid, and to the other hormone cascades, I think are just, I think there are ways that drinking fluoride-free water benefits the human organism that we haven't even discovered yet because fluoride has been considered crucial, vital for so many decades that Nobody studied that. Um, so how do you keep the fluoride out of your system personally? Um, if you once you have, well, there's a salt loading protocol that can, with iodine and salt, you can remove the halides that are attached to your iodine receptors. I just basically take my iodine every day, Lugol's, and uh, the, the fluoride can't get in. It's, you know, it's, my iodine's already gone. Receptors. Yeah, all your receptors are saturated. Yeah, and that, so to getting enough iodine in your diet, either through foods or a supplement, is vital. But many people forget that second piece, which is if your if your body's saturated with fluoride, the iodine's not going to be able to attach to the receptors. What do you think about the, the skin patch testing for iodine? I currently recommend a twenty four hour urine for iodine to see. Uh, how your iodine levels, can we do the, the skin patch testing or not? Well, in Europe, we don't have a hot glue lab. So I do recommend the skin patch testing because I actually had somebody who did both and they were identical. Their results were identical. So I do recommend in the absence of, obviously, if somebody's in America, I might recommend that they do the hot glue lab test, a 24-hour uptake test. But uh, if you don't have that available to you, the skin patch test is just fine. 